Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Grussell, and in today's YouTube question and answer, we're going to answer a question from a Facebook fan that said, uh, what are some nutritional strategies that I can use to become more insulin sensitive? So when it comes to insulin sensitivity, your number one biggest bang for your buck strategy is weight loss. If you want to improve your insulin sensitivity over the long term, losing weight is the most effective thing that you can do. So make that a priority. Getting lean is going to make you more insulin sensitive. Now when it comes to getting lean, it's really interesting because more research is showing that how you're going to lose weight and your level of insulin sensitivity are tightly connected. So specifically I want to show you one study that shows how insulin sensitivity impacts weight loss. Because if you want to lose weight the most in the most effective manner, you're probably going to need to restrict carbohydrates. While if you were very insulin sensitive, excuse me, well if you were very insulin sensitive, it doesn't really matter and you can just lose weight with lots of different macronutrient ratios. So let's look at this. What you can see here, this is a weight loss graph from the A to Z study, which was a large-scale 12-month weight loss study, which pitted a lot of the very popular diets, Atkins, Zone, Ornish, and then also the Learn diet, um, against each other to see what elicited the greatest weight loss. So as you can see from the graph, uh, based on the books, which this is easily the most uh, creative graphic I've ever created, but you can see that with the Atkins diet, after 12 months, participants lost the most weight on that diet compared to the zone, the Ornish on the far right, or the Learn or kind of the control diet. So what was really interesting here is if we look at the next picture, the researchers wanted to look at the impact of insulin sensitivity on weight loss. So what they did was they took in a secondary analysis, they took basically the extremes of carbohydrates. So the Atkins diet, which is the lowest carbohydrate diet, and then the Ornish diet, which is the highest carbohydrate diet. And what they found when they looked at those two extremes and they looked at insulin sensitivity, people who were the most versus the least insulin sensitive, that it didn't really matter who lost the most weight, or excuse me, that it didn't really matter which diet you were on if you were the, in the most insulin sensitive group. So if you had the highest insulin sensitivity, you lost essentially the same amount of weight if you're on the Atkins diet versus the Ornish diet. So now it gets really interesting when you look at people who are the most insulin resistant. So as you can see here by this slide, people that were the most insulin resistant were really only successful on the Atkins diet, losing an average of 11 pounds compared to just under four pounds on the Ornish diet. So this is really interesting and a great example of showing how your insulin sensitivity can impact which diet you should go on to lose weight. So if you're really looking to improve insulin sensitivity, start with a more carbohydrate restricted approach rather than a higher carbohydrate approach. Now, this example with the A to Z study, we looked at, they looked at the Ornish, which is a very high carbohydrate versus the Atkins, which is a very, very low carbohydrate. But this same, this same sort of difference you can, has been shown in other studies which pitted more of a traditional diet, say like a, a My Pyramid low fat type diet, compared to a zone diet of say 40% calories from carbohydrates. So in that case, moving from say 50 to 60, like more of a traditional carbohydrate diet, down to a 40% calories from carbohydrate diet, you saw those changes in people, people who had the least amount, the poorest insulin sensitivity, did better on the zone type diet. So you don't need to go all the way down to Atkins to get 10% calories from carbohydrates. Just drop your carbs to, say, 40%, and you still reap those benefits, um, even if you don't have great insulin sensitivity. So there's weight loss, there's carbohydrate restriction, which actually is going to impact and make your weight loss more effective if you need to improve your insulin sensitivity. And then the last piece is exercise. So these are two good long-term solutions. So this is big picture, looking at eliciting weight loss over several weeks, you know, over the long term. 
But exercise is really our short-term solution because you get an immediate increase in insulin sensitivity with exercise. So basically what exercise does is exercise causes the translocation of more GLUT4 receptors on your muscle cells. So what does that mean? So imagine here's your muscle, right? And then in here are all these glucose transporters waiting to come to the surface. Now the more insulin sensitive you are, the more glucose transporters you're going to have. So let's say normally you just have this amount. But then once you start exercising, exercise causes these receptors to translocate or basically come to the surface of your muscle cell. So then they're here waiting to take up more sugar. So this would be maybe what you have initially. And then once you exercise, in this case, we doubled it, right? But you get more glucose transporters on your muscle cells. So that's going to preferentially shuttle carbohydrates to your muscles and not towards other places like, say, fat cells, or to leave it in your circulation, causing your body to pump up more insulin, right? And kind of exacerbating the insulin resistance. Now, what's really interesting about kind of this phenomenon is that it's insulin independent. So if you exercised and then didn't even take in any carbohydrates, you still get this bump in glucose uptake and insulin sensitivity. Exercise gives it to you both ways. And this happens right away. So by exercising more frequently, say, let's say you train with weights, or you're going to start training with weights three days a week. And then, you know, since you're at the gym, you might as well do a little bit of cardio afterwards. So you spend an hour and a half at the gym three days a week. A better strategy would be to train with weights three days a week. Maybe you're there for an hour. And then another two or three days a week, do your cardio or do your intervals then. So you're ending up exercising or getting that bump in insulin sensitivity five or six times a week instead of just three. So if you can, space out your exercise so you can reap the benefit of this exercise-induced increases in insulin sensitivity. Okay? So those are the three uh, big and key ways to have the biggest impact uh, on being getting you more insulin sensitive. I know that exercise isn't really a nutritional strategy, but we're really looking at kind of optimizing the whole system. And it's so important with this, you know, in regards to this, that we had to include it. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video, looking at nutritional strategies to help you become more insulin sensitive. I'm Dr. Mike Roussel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit my blog at MikeRussell.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.